And so our whole um, focus on trying to bring and attract top talent and retain top talent, um, we believe innovation is one of those things. Obviously, we're looking for young talent. You know, millennials love innovation. They don't, they just really view it as the way that they do work. And so we believe that this, you know, really gives us um, heads up over other organizations that are just doing things the same old way. So uh, we think really from a talent um, acquisition perspective and from a talent, uh, from a, an employee engagement perspective, it's been great. It's also been really great from an organizational development and culture change. As Most you can, definitely. as you can imagine, a 145 year old company, um, we're very entrenched in culture. We a very conservative, you know, kind of organization. So to kind of introduce to them, you know, we're going to be innovative. We're going to get messy. We're going to make right. mistakes. We're going we're, to fail at something. We're going to fail at something. So do you want to kind of talk about that, Sally? Because that was just one of the things that we were really concerned about is how will this conservative kind of culture adapt to kind of this learning environment, this experimentation? And, and we're, that is a big challenge for us because we are so conservative, we're a regulated industry, um, we have our rules and our, our regulations, um, but it's a great challenge because you do get to experiment and it does get messy, but it's kind of fun to be messy. So it really incorporates the f more fun at work um, creativity is kind of like a diving board into innovation, though innovation is pretty a systematic science. Um, the creativity that people can just be thinking differently and um, just trying new things, piloting things, um, is pretty exciting. And for us, being 145 years old, that's not the norm. And uh, when we were doing our original orientation and training with employees, we were like, what's the first step right. for innovation? And people were like, be creative, coming up with great ideas. And uh, of course, those are all really important. But um, what we said was, it's really unlearning what you already know. Um, so part of you know really being innovative is to really kind of stop looking at how you've always done it and sort of say, is there a better way of doing it? Do we even need to do it like this? What do clients really right. want? want and what is going to make it best for us. But we also realized, as Sally said, there's this fine balance between you know, being creative and having you know, creative juices flowing and getting employees involved with ideas, as well as having some kind of structure. You know, in, our, in our organization, we knew that we needed to have a, you know, a framework that would both um, infuse and kind of generate um, creativity, but also give us a structure to work with. So we knew that for us to start from scratch would make a lot of sense because neither of us were innovation experts. So a lot of the first things we did was really um, say we need a partner with us. And we were so pleased to be um, discovering within our own University of Maine system, you know, the whole um, innovation engineering model that Doug Hall had started and has really brought to, you know, a lot of companies and a lot of professionals here in Maine who are interested in the work of innovation. So we have found the that model has been really perfect for us in terms of really help um, create creativity, but also to give us a framework in which to fail fast, fail cheap, to define um, what real problems are before we just jumped into the solution to, and start doing them, to not spend a lot of money before we commercialize it, you know, for all. So we've gotten better at our decision-making process by utilizing this very disciplined um, innovation engineering model that Doug Hall um, had uh, put together. So um, ideas come to us. We have an online portal on our intranet system where employees can submit ideas. And then we've established, this is our third year, we have an innovation team and um, which has a team lead, myself, and David is the sponsor of the innovation uh, initiative for the bank, as well as we have a liaison, Jean Mattimore, who sits on our board of directors, and she supports the initiative and the work that we're doing. So we're really positioned, I think, very well, in a systematic way, on being able to um, have, vo uh, have employees have a voice and submit ideas and 
work through the model to make right decisions for right products or services that come that come up or process enhancements? Well, I think you know what you bring up, Sally, is it's really important, I think, for all organizations that are looking at innovation. You really do, first of all, need to put it into your strategic plan. It needs to be there front and center. Everyone needs to be looking at it. But you also need the support um, in terms of your board of directors, your senior leadership, your management. Um, you know, innovation for us is a part-time job. Sally has other work to do. Our innovation team, um, which is made of our employees, um, this is just a very small piece of their job. But um, I think everyone really is excited about the work that they that they do right. around this because they do have a voice. They know they're making a difference, um, and they know we're making the organization better. Um, so who wouldn't want to do that? But it's also given us, a, as we've talked about, a lot more discipline. So I think with a lot of organizations, what innovation um, or what we do is we tend to kind of stay focused very internally, right? I mean, I think organizations are very internally focused. They kind of look at their own issues, their own problems. They kind of look, as we talked about, you want to be leveraging your people's talents to make um, improvements and enhancements. But we've also learned through this process that it's really important to be going externally and to really be mining what are best companies doing. We will never be, you know, creating brand new technologies, you know, at the level that Apple can do with something like Apple Pay. But we certainly can partner with Apple in terms of Apple Pay. We have, um, I went to a innovation conference last year and saw all kinds of technologies that we can partner, white label, or purchase um, to be offering to our clients. So a lot of what I think this uh, initiative has done for us is to become much more externally focused, to be looking for best practice, and to really um, look outside of the banking industry. And that to me is really where um, I believe our success will come, is looking at what, you know, retail giants are doing, looking at what Amazon is doing, looking at what Apple is doing, not looking at necessarily what other re, uh, community retail banks, banks in Maine are doing. Yeah. It, um, that's a key part of innovation is that um, continuously learning and educating yourself in regards to what's going on out in the, in the business world. And it's not just the financial institutions or that particular industry, but looking at just the whole innovations. I mean, some who else could you partner with to repackage a product or a service that meets our clients' needs? Um, and, and how are they repackaging and who are they partnering with? So really looking at, I had gone to an innovation conference out in Las Vegas and um, was fortunate enough to go on a field trip to Zappos.com. Well, you talk about innovation. That company is just amazing at how they deliver customer service. And um, they do it really, really well, and they're very, very innovative. And they have a lot of fun at work. Their workplace was definitely on an extreme side of our workplace in regards to uh, a banking um, industry. But they really, the employees were um, very engaged and very open to working and committed to working at Zappos, which was really neat to see. I think a lot of the first year we spent on the, just the infrastructure, the infrastructure of creating an innovation team, um, really dividing work up and, and sort of determining, and then really just getting the whole organization you know, up to a common level of understanding, having education, onboarding, really making sure that folks knew how to make a recommendation for ideas, um, how it was going to be vetted, really understanding the innovation engineering model. So I think the first year we just really spent a lot of time on the infrastructure infrastructure. We did see some ideas uh, being generated and we started a few. The second year was really, I think, very exciting because we did start started seeing great ideas. We had hundreds of, you know, over a hundred ideas after just six months of doing this. So it's like, okay, how do we manage this number of ideas without discouraging people that, you know, uh, and what's so great about this um, 
this model is that these ideas never go away. You know, and in traditional ways of decision making, you would come up with one idea, all the other ideas would sort of be lost, and then you would move forward with this one idea, sort of realize halfway in between, this isn't really going to solve our problem, but you just keep going with it. This is really great because there's several stages, and at any time, the idea, if if it's not what we believe it was uh, meant to be, we put it back into the pool. So the pool of ideas stays forever, and we, we keep going back to that pool right. for solutions to ongoing issues. But what we also did is, you know, this is a business initiative. I mean, I think that's what people need to remember. I think a lot of times, because you know, they hear words creativity or they hear about organizational or culture change. People can get a little nervous about this, but this is a business initiative. So just like any other business initiative, we have created strategy, we have created work plans, we've created um, metric. So one of the things we did in the second year was really sort of saying, how do we measure our progress? How do we measure our impact? So we wanted to make sure that we were looking at, you know, how this impact was, um, how, what kind of impact we were having in employee engagement, what kind of impact were we having on our client satisfaction, and of course, what was this meaning from, you know, a business financial or from an outcome perspective. So I'm really proud of the work that was done by Sally and the innovation team for us to really come out with those metric. And then of course, so much of what we've been doing um, now kind of in year three is just kind of keeping it alive and keeping it on everyone's plate to really be telling the stories. Because what I've tried to say all along is, you know, you don't just kind of wake up and it's all of a sudden you're an innovative company. You have to work every day. And every day and every week we see little little, you know, kind of buds of, of innovation, but they aren't necessarily like, oh my gosh, we just invented something brand new. What we're seeing is we're seeing people work together. We're seeing collaboration. We're seeing taking diverse points of view and integrating them into creating something that's much better than the one idea itself. Right. That to me is what we're demonstrating every day. So we have to keep telling these stories and we have to keep looking for how innovation is occurring in the work environment and sort of where it's not. not. <laughs> and so our job is about, you know, I think it's really about storytelling and really trying to recognize and, and um, you know, reward that, that behavior, which is great, and continuing to kind of inspire and getting others, you know, to um, take a little bit more risk and be willing to make suggestions and ideas. We're more mindful, I think, and disciplined in really listening and um, working more closely together and, and asking really good questions. Because it really is usually around problem solving is where innovation kind of stems from. So if a client has a need or a problem that product or a service could, um, it could address, then um, defining it and asking really good questions um, whether or not to move it forward is is so collaboration really yeah i think diversity. it's absolutely collaboration so along with the innovation um, initiative that we started a few years ago obviously employee engagement has been around but i mean i think we've been building that um, but we were also building um, a client initiative um, we were building a business intelligence uh, initiative. So I think what we started seeing in our own group, because all of these initiatives are um, under me with my staff working on them, but we started seeing the need to really work. So although Sally was working on innovation, she needed to work, really work with the engagement um, initiative and with a client initiative and with the business intelligent um, initiative. And I think we've been able to see that they're all interdependent. So along with the collaboration, it's really the interdependency. So I think we started that really for the last few years in our division, um, but now it's really going bank wide. So um, when we talk about business intelligence, we're talking about innovation, we're talking about uh, client relationships. This is not, you know, this isn't a an initiative, I mean, this isn't just an That's HR or, or a marketing or a technology initiative. These are bank-wide business initiatives that are very interdependent uh, with one another, that are very integrated, and we really need every business line to be looking at it. So when we're really, it's really hard for us now to sort of talk only about like, 
business intelligence because business intelligence is about being innovative to find new solutions for our clients. So, so in everything we're doing, we, we can't really just sort of say this is innovation because the innovation is about helping our clients. Even when we were doing mobile banking, which all banks are pretty much doing, we said, well, it's not, it's not the mobile technology. That's not super unique, but what would be um, innovative about it? What, why would that be a differentiator for us? And we decided that it was the technology itself wasn't innovative, but if we could have more of our clients using it, um, and really getting a greater um, number of folks, because we pretty much saw that people were getting, you know, between 10 or 15 percent of their clients using mobile. But we set a, a goal that was double that, and that's really what we focused on: was the adoption of mobile, not that wow, look at all of these features. But we hope to offer more innovative features uh, because now our clients are actually using it. They're actually saying, hey, what about this? And I, we'd love to see that. Right. So now that we have more clients using it, we know what they want next. And we, if we had only had a few of our clients using it, we might not be at this stage. So that I think is an example of, technology is not always, I, I keep trying to explain to the board, we're not looking for grand slams every day. What we're looking for is getting people on basis. We're get, we want to be using, finding out what other companies are doing. We want to be doing things a little bit better because the more people you get on basis, then you do have chances of hitting for home runs and grand slams. But without getting people on bases, you have no score. Very nice analogy. I like yeah. that baseball since yeah. it's the first day for the Red Sox Excellent. to play at Fenway. <laughs>